uh, the first time I got invited out to a crazy church like this church right here, I only went and I was going to stay a, a couple of songs just to get the piano player off my back so he wouldn't invite me to come to church no more. Just to get him off, off my back. And I smoked a couple of joints. I, I'm serious. I'm telling you the honest truth. I smoked a couple of joints because I was only going to stay, you know, like one song. I was going to wave at the piano player and then I could go back to that fish place where he worked because they got the best fish in, in the whole Laurel, Mississippi. And so, and I'd always get the munches for fish, and so I knew where to go. So I got up in there, I sat on the back row, and uh, there was a little lady. She got happy. And when they started playing music, she got real happy, especially when the song was fast. And before I knew it, she was dancing on my Elton John platforms. And looking back, if she'd have just said, look, you might want to just kind of move out of the way just a little bit and give me a little room because anything could happen. But she didn't tell me that. But uh, so I wrote a song, Somebody Move. And so I'm looking at y'all right now and I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. What they did last night when they won that pennant. They went, they went a bunch of fanatics up in there. But we got a lot of fanatics up in here. Hallelujah. You might want to turn to your next door neighbor right now and say, you might want to give me a little space. Somebody move. I'm feeling something inside. I can see with my eyes There's something more real than life It is the Spirit of God Don't try to figure it out The devil will make you down Let go and let God be God Get ready for the wind and fire oh my. Windows are open wide Just let your heart be your guide The floodgates wait for the sign For heaven and earth to collide The price is already paid The prayers has already been prayed It's time to lift up the name
Hallelujah. Y'all may be seated. Uh, more track in my monitors, if you don't mind. Thank you. This next song was written. I started on it in 2017 at the Best Western. That's where we stay, right? At the Best Western Hotel in New Caney, Texas. I started on it then, and then a year later, when we came back last year, I finished it. So it took a little time. But it's a story of my life. The Bible says he makes his mercies new every morning. So this morning about 12 o'clock, I just started living again. Can I get a witness? Turn to somebody and say, I just started living for the first time. More attractive.
Just started living for the first time And if you would, they got to get uh, all this packed up in a little black bag <laughs> and get it out. Well, I, I'm sorry. I thought everybody was standing. Y'all can sit back down. I thought the others were. There's a disconnect sometimes from the back to the front. <laughs> That's why I do stuff like this right here so I can get further back here talk to you that's why I got a stage that used to roll back and forth you know so I can come out uh, I, I've often told even uh, balconies Bishop you know this if you have a church with a balcony they don't fill up there what you feel down here they disc it's like two different churches so so uh, uh, stay with us I'll, everybody say unify wow. amen we got we to work together here so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna set you up I'm fix to ask you to stand in just a minute everybody <laughs> all right I'm gonna give you a head start there let you know Giving you time to get that little black bag packed up. <laughs> Kingdom connections mean so much to me. Uh, I have a deep, deep appreciation for the men and women in my life who have uh, touched, connected. I've been doing this since 1979. It's when I got born again, started preaching in 1980. I never felt myself worthy. Still, still struggle with worthiness to get to do what I do. Uh, where I'm from. Uh, the people I'm connected with, um, a young man uh, I was raised up with, went 11 years to school with, first through the 11th grade, then he went to the Marine Corps, and I finished high school. Uh, you know, uh, my brother calls me last night at 11 o'clock and said, Rex shot and killed a guy. You know, and I look at my life and the patterns of my life, and, and, and it looks like it's probably going to be self-defense. The issue is simply, though, our lives have, have taken different routes so I grew up, and I've always had this um, country boy, can't believe God's allowing. That's why I just get excited when anyone shows up to hear me preach or to be in our church. And I, I, Patsy, I've been this way for as long as you've known me. I just, I, 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 and even right now, somebody says, I can't believe what y'all are doing out at the ranch. <clears throat> I don't know anything else to do. You know, if you, if you get flooded, you build, you rebuild, you just do it again. You can't just give up. You only got so much time here. You don't get to come back. You're not coming back as a cow, a roach. You're not getting to come back as, 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 a, as a lion, a tiger, a bear, none of that. You, you, this is it. This is all you get. And so as you're moving through life with all the, you know, as life begins to creep up on you and you feel a little, oh, man, I'm stiff. You got to get up. You got to keep on pushing. You got to keep on going. You, you can't quit. Amen. Our kids are watching us. People are observing you. Uh, you got to find the good in, in, in the bad situations of life. you got to thank God for all the things that happen. Lord bless our children. Y'all get on out of here walking from the sanctuary. Amen. Love you guys. Some friends of mine were in Kentucky this week, went and saw the ark. They're excited about our kids going to see the ark. So that'll be in June of next year. So that's all the things we're doing. Uh, Pastor Gary came into my life in the early 90s. When I say early 90s. I'm talking about like 91. Right, so he's been with me as long as my pastor's been with me, who I talked to this morning, who's excited about being here Tuesday night. He's preaching this morning, then he's going to drive down. So he'll be with us on Tuesday night and on, at the conference and, and Wednesday. But uh, Pastor Gary's taught me so much, and he's, he's teaching now on succession, on how to transition from uh, one pastor to another pastor. He's not here to do that. I'm staying for a little while longer. But they, he is teaching that. The church he was pastoring, he transitioned it over to another young man. They have just bought a $10 million building in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They're running uh, two or 3,000 people now. Uh, the church has exploded. He set the foundation for that. He raised a young man up and turned him loose. Uh, so that, there's a lot this man has to say. I want you to, first, I want you to get informed. Take notes, pay attention. 
Second, after information, I want you to ask God to give you revelation. And now, God, what did he just say? How does it affect my life? How can it change my life? And then third, leave here with some inspiration. Can I get an amen? Amen. Would you give Bishop Gary? Now you can stand. Come on. Good morning. You may be seated. I, I'm going to make uh, longer comments tonight when I have a little more time. We don't have a lot of time this morning, but I, I, I believe that my connection with Pastor Jerry Hovider, Lori, and this church is a God connection, a kingdom connection. Amen. And it's been for many, many years, and I'm always thrilled to come, whether it's uh, to conference, and I've been to a few of the conferences, not as many as Brother David, but um, I'm excited to be here, and I, I do have a word I want to share with you uh, that, that I believe is essential for the day in which we live, and I'm very sensitive that there are seasons of our life, right, and uh, I, I'm in a different season now than I've been in the past, and, uh, and if you don't understand those seasons, you don't know how to navigate. Now, you all don't have a lot of seasons in, in Houston, but uh, I could take you places where they do have seasons. In fact, uh, they, they're, they're fortunate right now to be in the 50s, and they're about to be in the 40s and 30s and, and below zero and so on. You know, I mean, so they're seasons, but you got to honor seasons because if you don't, they'll hurt you, right? If you're up north and, and you're going into the winter, you say, I don't like winter, and so you go out in short sleeves and shorts, how many know you're in trouble? The season will bite you. It will hurt you. And so um, we're, we're entering into a season, I think, in a new season in the church. I, I have spent the last four and a half years of my life researching and evaluating the church and where it's at and what's happening in a very general sense. But I, I think I have a, a grasp on it, uh, perhaps, that, that will help some people. But uh, I just see that we're in a we're in a, we're about to approach a new season, and how you navigate in between seasons is important, and um, and so uh, you might be a teenager in here, you might be a senior uh, saint, amen. I almost said citizen, but senior saint, amen. I I I'd be among you right now, amen. <laughs> you know, Jerry reminded me just the other day that I'm getting really old and. He was concerned I might not be able to do three services, but I'm going to do three services. Amen. But uh, I, I want to share some thoughts, uh, so we're going to go to the Word very quickly. Um, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn first to um, the book of Exodus, and then we'll start with our subject this morning. But uh, Moses in the 33rd chapter of Exodus was, was discussing, I don't think I gave you the Scripture, but it's all right. He was, he was discussing with the Lord his newfound leadership for the children of Israel. And he basically told God in the 33rd chapter of Exodus, he said, um, God, if, if you don't go with me, I'm not going. In other words, I'll lead these people, but I need to know you're going to be with me as I lead the people. And God said, I'll be with you. And, and so then Moses said, well, show me your glory. Now, that was, that was a major thing to ask God because glory actually means the full manifestation of something or the weightiness of all that it is. Like if you had a, had a Ferrari, amen, and the glory of that Ferrari wouldn't be seen until it was over 200, 230 miles an hour. That's the full measure of what it has to offer. And so, so he was asking God to show him his glory, and, and God said, no, you can't see my glory and live. In other words, the full manifestation of what I have, you can't see it. And so I'll just show you part of me. And, and, and so I, I think and I sense by the Spirit that, that something is happening. And, and the children of Israel at this time were in, in slavery. They were, they were bound in slavery. How many of you can remember the season of your life that you were bound in some form of slavery, amen, whether it was slave to drugs or alcohol or gambling or whatever your thing was. We all have those things, right? And I'll talk a little bit later about my thing, but, 
but we all have those things that that enslaved us to it because we were we became addicts or addiction and addiction actually means a voice addiction is voice and so when when you're an addict it means that that the thing that that enslaves you speaks louder than any other voice and it drives you back to itself to keep you from where you're going. And we had that. And so the children of Israel were enslaved. And now they're coming out and they're making their way through this desert to the promise. And that's, that's the, the whole picture of the Christian life is we were slaves to sin and God set us free. And now we're moving towards the promise. And it's an exciting time. But in, in this picture, the children of Israel were moving out of slavery in towards the promise and they were they were going on this journey and the journey wasn't easy right 16 years hadn't been easy for pastor jerry and for you as a congregation but it's been wonderful yes. victorious amen difficulties only make you more excited about what god's about to do amen because we keep moving in him we keep seeing what he's about to do. And so let's pick up the story now. They're, they're setting up this journey, and they're setting up this tabernacle, and they call it the Tent of Meetings, and that's where Moses went in and met with God. And when he met with God, he'd bring the word of the Lord to the people and give clear direction. And in the 40th chapter, in verse 34, it says, Then the cloud covered the Tent of Meeting. In other words, the cloud represented the person of God himself. And it covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of God filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because of the cloud that had settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In all the travels of the Israelite, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they would not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and it was fire by, uh, in the cloud by night in the sight of all the house of Israel during all their travels. In other words, now they're, they're traveling together as a nation, and, and they have this understanding that if the cloud is with us, God is with us, and he gave them an expression that I'm with you. How many of you believe that God being with us is important? Not only on Sunday morning, but on Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning, I want to know that God is with me. I want to know that he's with my marriage, that he's with my family, that he's with my ministry. I, I, I just need to have this understanding that God is with me. And so he gave them that insight. Now the children of Israel are moving, and they're moving as a nation, and some say there could have been uh, over 600,000 men, but there were per perhaps over 3 million people that were traveling together. Now I've taken a vacation with all of our kids and a few relatives, and that was a difficult task. I cannot comprehend the whole nation of Israel moving together. And so I looked at some pictures, and it was interesting if I can have, uh, and I want to use as a text or a subject this morning, move with the cloud. Come on, look at your neighbor, somebody around you say, move with the cloud. Amen. Some of them did look back at you. Come on, give them a little elbow and say, I, I, I said move with the cloud, move, move with the cloud. And so, so here's, here's a picture of the children of Israel moving with the cloud in, in the desert, this is the, the nation. There were 12 tribes that, that camped around the tabernacle, which is the tent of meeting, which represented the place where Moses went in and met with God to bring direction to the people. And so there are 12 tribes, and you can see all the numbers of the tribes, and then the tribe of Levite and the priests were closest to the, to the uh, tabernacle. And so they encamped according to the, the, the direction that God was giving them, all right? And then the next slide shows you a little bit. This was an artist's uh, depiction of, of the 12 tribes differently. And that is kind of cool because it's a sign of the cross or things coming. And so, the, again, the, the cloud was there by day. And then at night, it looked like this. The next slide, it looked like this, a pillar of fire. Now, this, is, this was the, all these people 
that we're, we're moving with the cloud. With that understanding, go to our text in Numbers chapter 9, and I'll start reading in the 15th verse, Numbers 9, 15th NIV. Now listen, because he repeats himself very clearly, but God wanted to make sure they, they got instructions, and this is how he was going to teach them to hear his voice. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, or testimony, was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. In other words, still a cloud, but it looked like fire. And I could imagine if I was approaching this, this encampment and I saw fire that wasn't going out, amen, even if I was a thief, I don't think I'd come close, amen. Somehow there was something powerful about what it looked like. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it's, uh, it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted above the tent, the Israelites set out. Whenever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. Now we got the picture, all right, but he's going to keep repeating it. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle for a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only for, from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whenever the cloud stayed over the tabernacle two days or a month or a year, the Israelites remained in camp and, 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 not, and did not set out. And when it lifted, they set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped. At the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. Now get this picture because I want to see the picture and we're going to move quickly. But get this picture. God was teaching a group of people who were enslaved as a result of many things. We don't have time to go into this morning, but they were enslaved. They, they were pushed to the brink and even further, and yet they were still God's people. Amen? I mean, you know, uh, two years ago, you were pushed to a brink, but you survived it. And now, somehow, something has happened again, and you say, oh, no. We've learned how to, how to make it through any difficulties in life and get better, not bitter. And so now the children of Israel are having to relearn the voice of God. That it was essential that the people of God knew the voice of God. Now, please understand, you might be sitting there and say, I've never heard an audible voice. I, I have not either. But I do understand the voice of God. That, that deep impression of knowing because you're close to him what he is saying in a particular moment in time. And so now they're relearning the voice of God because they just came out of this horrible situation. They're headed toward the promise, but you cannot function in the promises of God without hearing his voice. And so they're having to hear this voice, but it's interesting how God does it because they're, they're encamping and then they're setting out and then they're setting up their tents and then they're breaking their tents down and camping out. And, and I could imagine some of them got frustrated and said, Lord, you know, I, I, I get it. It's okay, but I think we could do this better. And they might have even thought, because some might have been Baptists, that we'll just form a committee. And we'll help God out in this situation. And, you know, I mean, a month of traveling and a month in camping kind of would work better with our families. And, you know, it, it just, we, we can help you, God, if you let us. But what God was wanting is to know, are you willing to hear my voice? And so sometimes they had to set up their entire camp. You saw the camp, what it looked like, all those tents, everything in the tent, all their belongings, you know, how uh, uh, making fire, setting up dinner, all, all that stuff was a part of life. And, and so now we set it up, and it's evening, and we're about to go to bed, and then we get back, and all of a sudden in the morning, the cloud's moving. God, we just got it set up. I mean, come on. Can you help us a little bit? And yet it was inconvenient. It wasn't what they wanted, but they were learning. They were learning. 
And sometimes in the body of Christ, we want everything always to be perfect. And yet God said, if, you, if you'll let me, I'll teach you how to not only survive, but thrive. And I believe that you are there in this moment. And so this morning, I, again, I would like to use as a subject, move with the cloud. And I want to give you some practical things. And if you're taking notes, you can write these down. But I want to first give you three things the cloud represents. The cloud represents. Number one, it represents God's covering for protection. God's covering for protection. I don't know about you, but we live in a crazy world with some really crazy people. And they just ain't in the, just in the inner cities. There's crazy people everywhere. They're, they're doing all kinds of crazy things in schools and malls and everywhere else. I mean, it's just some crazy things happening right now. I just need to know that God's got me covered. Amen? So the cloud represents protection. If you've ever been in, in that area of the country and the desert, it's hot. And now you think Houston's hot? No, it's hot. It's seriously hot. But he said, during the day, I'm going to be a cloud. In other words, I'm going to give you shade. During the day. How I many God knows how to take care of us? He said, I'll protect you during the day. And at night, even in the desert, it gets cold. It gets really cold. He said, I'll be fire at night. In other words, I'm going to protect you from the environment around you. And it, it does not have permission to harm you because I'm going to see you through. God's protection. The cloud represented God's protection. Number two, the cloud represented God's direction for their future. God's direction for their future because God, God knew where he was going. He knew where he was going to take the people. We need to know that God's in control of our lives. We need to know that there is a future out there because a future helps us navigate the present. If you don't understand the future, the present can overwhelm you. In other words, the day-to-day -day things can get you. What you're even going through now, on, 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 you know, in... in, in uh, New Caney is, is, is a difficult thing, but it ain't going to get us. Not this church. A lot of churches would have quit and given up the first time, let alone two years later. But I'm telling you, you guys are, are, have a testimony in God. We won't quit. We won't back up. And, and we're going to be here. And we have a future. We have something to do and somewhere to go and something to accomplish for the kingdom of God. Because we're kingdom connected. And so, so the, the, it represents the future. The future always focuses on, on the next. The present always focuses on the now. But if you only look at the now, it can confuse the future. That's why God gives us hope. Faith, hope, and love abide forever. Hope ties faith and love together. And, and hope tells us about the future, that, that even as you're going through difficulty now, it won't last forever. Amen. It, it, has a, it has a moment in time, but it doesn't have my future. God alone has my future. The cloud represents direction for their future. And thirdly, it represents uh, authorization on leadership. Authorization on leadership. Authorization because the leaders, in this case Moses, had to determine when the cloud was moving and when it was settling. And then he would bring it to the people according to the scripture that we just read in, in Numbers chapter 9 and verse number 23. They obeyed the Lord's uh, order in accordance with the command through Moses. So leadership had to determine if the cloud was moving or not and make the announcement to the people. In other words, when you have fine leadership like you have in this house, through Pastor Jerry Hovider, it, 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 you know that he is seeking God for your lives and the life of this church and, and your well-being and your family and, and so on. And so it becomes important that we know that God has authorized leadership to help navigate us into the promise. Amen. Because some of you are on the brink of the promise, but you haven't had been there yet. You know, the promise of eternal life is yours in Jesus Christ. But I mean, the, the, the breakthroughs that some of you need right now, you're moving towards. Amen. And so I, I came to tell you that the cloud is moving. That the cloud is moving. I, I have sensed in, in the church of Jesus Christ the cloud is moving. 
like I've never seen. We, we have been in this moment, this in-between seasons, which is really awkward. In Tulsa, we do have winter. And I, I don't like winter, but I can, I can say I hate you, winter, and I will not submit to you, winter. But when it gets about 20, 30 degrees outside, amen, I, I change my dress. I change where I, I change if I want to even go out. I, I'd rather just put wood in the fireplace and enjoy myself. You know, I, but, but, but I, I, I've learned how to, to navigate in different seasons, but, but, then again, when we're, when we're in fall, which right now we're coming out of summer, I, I have to change my dress. And so there's, there's heavy coats and there's, there's sweaters I need to bring out and there's shorts and T-shirts I need to put away for a while. And, and I'm making changes in between seasons, but I'm moving forward according to the voice of God. And we need to hear the voice of God. Can I get an Amen. Okay, quickly, let me give you some things. I'm just going to flip through a lot of notes. So I'm going to give you what happens when the cloud moves. I want to give you four things, and we'll close. What happens when the cloud moves? Number one, there's an impartation. There's an impartation. Impartation is essential. God cares about you, what you're facing, what you're going through, What's going on in your life right now? God cares about you. He cares about you as a church, but he also cares about you as individuals. You're navigating things that you didn't anticipate. And so there's an impartation in Numbers chapter 11. It says this. He said, Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke with him, and he took the spirit that was on him, and he put it the spirit on the 70 elders. And when the spirit came on them, they prophesied. This is Moses and the elders. God was with Moses, but when he got in the midst of the elders, what was on him got on them. That's called the impartation. There's something that has to happen. And when you come to church, I don't know about you, but I never just come to church and sit idly. I want something that can change my life. I want an impartation. I, I, and, and if you don't get it, I'm going to pull it out of you anyways. But I will not leave the same person that came in. I'm going to be changed. Every time we gather, we've got to be changed. There has to be an impartation. And when the cloud is moving, there's an impartation that takes place. And, and so I'm just telling you, get what's yours. When you have this conference, you know, on this tonight and then on Tuesday night and Wednesday night, get what's yours. This is yours. Jerry doesn't, Pastor Jerry doesn't do this just for the sake of having a conference. He does it because it's a special time that voices from the outside and will come in and speak things into your life that will help change you and redirect your life. Come on, say the cloud is moving. Wow. Number two, when the cloud moves, there's an interruption of routine. There's an interruption of routine. We all want this little system we can put God in, but God doesn't fit in your box or mine. Amen. And sometimes we just want it all to happen just according to our plan. But sometimes God doesn't work according to your plan. Sometimes he interrupts your routine. And if God's given you a season where you have more time than you've had before, then, then don't waste it sitting around. Amen. Now, now, somebody said, are you retired now? I said, I don't believe in retirement. I believe in refirement. Amen. And so I'm not sitting around. I don't do well sitting around at my house. The first week that, that I, I gave up the church and I went home, my wife said, what you going to do today? As if to say, I hope you're going to do something outside this house because you won't drive me crazy sitting around this house, which, which was true. But there, there has to be an interruption of routine. And, and the Bible says in 1 Kings 8, it says, The priests could not perform their services because of the cloud. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. Sometimes a conference interrupts your routine. But it's for a purpose. It's for kingdom connections. And after 16 years, there ought to be a celebration. Most churches don't make it 16 years. And those that do don't make it with the same pastor. But thank God you're here, you're doing well, and the future looks bright. Amen. I tried to, 
tried to come this morning to tell you the cloud is moving. The cloud is moving. Thirdly, when the cloud moves, there's seasonal modification. There's seasonal modification. It was interesting, the story tells us in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, about Elisha, there was a huge famine in the land. I mean, severe famine. There was no food, no food. It was just berserk crazy, and there was no food. And, and it says, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says, because the people were so discouraged because things weren't happening the way they're supposed to. He said, about this time tomorrow. Now, we can just stop there. He, he started prophesying to the people, and he said, about this time tomorrow. In other words, something is about to happen, because I came to tell you the cloud's moving. And about this time tomorrow, some things are going to shift. About this time tomorrow, things are about to reorient themselves. About this time tomorrow, you're about to get a breakthrough. About this time tomorrow, things are going to begin to happen that you weren't even planning on happening, but God's been working behind the scenes for this moment. Now, I don't know if tomorrow is tomorrow or, or in the next season or the next moment, but things are shifting, and I believe God has you in mind. He's the cloud is moving and he's about to do some great things in your life. Things are changing. You're moving from one season spiritually to another season. Even in the season that isn't fun like winter, real winter, you don't have it here, but real winter, the, the, all the, the, the vegetables and trees, the, their roots grow deeper, which means it gets stronger. And if you've been through a spiritual winter, I came to encourage you because your roots got deeper, you're stronger than you think, and you're about to produce at levels that you have never produced in your life, and I really don't care how old you are, you are about to produce for the kingdom of God in a powerful way. There's a seasonal modification. And then lastly, there's an intervention of presence. When the cloud moves, there's an intervention of presence. We need a presence. That's why I don't understand how, why people don't come to church in, for praise and worship. I don't get that. God's not sitting at the edge of his seat saying, oh, this is my favorite part of the service because the preacher's preaching. I have not said one thing that God doesn't know infinitely more than I do about. Do you understand? But when praise and worship comes, God stands. Because he loves to hear the hearts and minds of people. You need to carry God's presence with you. There were times in our family we had lots of kids and kids that were staying with us nine over the years. They weren't all ours, but they were all, all over our house all the time. My wife loved kids, you know, and I survived it. Amen. But there were sometimes it just got crazy, and I said, hold it, hold it, hold it. Everybody stop. And I'd put on some worship music, and I'd turn it real loud. And I said, everybody just relax. I'm going to let worship fill this house. There's sometimes I was driving in my car and, and going, going to a certain place, and it was a horrible crisis taking place, and I, I was uptight, and I felt tension in my life, and, and there were moments where I wasn't sure we were going to make it, and this happened and that happened. In the midst of those, I'd put on some worship and I'd fill my car with worship and to worship could overtake my natural mind thinking all the crazy thoughts. Presence of God changes everything. Learn to love his presence, his presence. The Bible says in Isaiah 19, the oracle concerning Egypt. This is where they were coming out of. See the Lord rise on a swift cloud is coming to Egypt. And the idols of Egypt trembled before him. And the hearts of the Egyptians melt within them. In other words, when God's presence comes, even those that are trying to come against you, trying to hinder you, melt because of his presence. We've got to love his presence, not only on Sunday morning for an hour or two, but we've got to love his presence every day of our life. I came this morning to tell you the cloud is moving. The cloud is moving. And he's got you in mind. He's got you in mind. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm ready for everything that God has. Amen? 
I'm 68 years young, and I'm ready like I've never been ready before. Hallelujah. And wherever his, his cloud moves, I'm moving with the cloud. I'm moving with the cloud. Amen. Little country church, you are about to see the cloud move at levels that you haven't seen in a long time. And when it moves, move with the cloud. Move with the cloud. Something new, something fresh, something's going to happen. Move with the cloud. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning. And as we celebrate you and all that you are for the last 16 years, we celebrate. We celebrate what you've done, what you're doing. And we also celebrate this morning what you're about to do. The cloud is moving. And we want to move with the cloud. So I thank you, Lord, young, middle age, old, wherever we are, I thank you. We get to do it together. We get to celebrate life together. There's something fresh that's coming, something powerful. And you're in the middle of it. And we want to be where you are. So I thank you for the people of God. Refresh their lives, their homes, their marriages, their families. Show yourself strong. Do a miracle. Change something. Thank you, Lord. The cloud's moving. And we make a decision this morning. We want to move with the cloud in the name of Jesus. Come on, say in the name of Jesus. Let it be so. Amen. God bless you.